Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. We've got a special treat for you—a double treat. It's not only our news watch unit, but it's also our all English lecture.、Mm -hmm. So we're going to be speaking to you 100% in English. Although I might sneak a word or two of other languages in there, but there'll never be enough to actually be one full percentage point. It will still mostly be 100% English spoken during today's lesson. So no Spanish, no French. French, no Taiwanese, no Mandarin,、nothing. no Japanese, no Russian or、yeah. Swedish either. Right. Although I really wish I could speak Russian fluently. That sounds like a pretty cool language, but、uh, that's <laughs> besides the point. Today is our news watch unit. We've got a couple of news stories. Something about the. Tampines Regional Library in Singapore. Cool. And then also some microchipped employees in Wisconsin in the USA. We'll find out what that's about in just a couple of seconds. So hey, let's get to it, everybody. Let's read the entire contents of our lesson right now. Education for everyone at Tampines Regional Library. The Tampines Regional Library in Singapore has more than just books. The library, which reopened its doors to the public in August 2017, after undergoing renovation work, caters to anyone with an interest in learning. Having massively increased its floor area and seating capacity, the library now has five floors and features spaces for different kinds of activities. For younger readers, there's a play area as well as a large book collection. Teenagers are provided with a more relaxed area for reading, while the adult readers section includes a volunteers corner for reading-related workshops. In addition to all these, the library features a cooking studio, work centers, and pixel labs where people can use green screens and experiment with virtual reality. There are even exercise bikes in the library's new health section, so people can burn calories while reading. With all of these elements, Tampines' new and improved regional library is a focal point for the community. People of all ages can go there for a varied learning experience that's setting exciting new standards for libraries. Three Square Market's microchipped employees. Three Square Market, a technology company from Wisconsin, U.S., has started inserting microchips into its employees. This might sound like a sci-fi horror movie, but in fact, the employees are having them implanted voluntarily. The chips were designed by Three Square Market with the help of Biohacks, a Swedish company. They allow wearers to open company doors, log into their computers, and even purchase food in the company's break room. Their main advantage is convenience, as people with chips. Need not worry about forgetting their keys, door cards, or wallets. Though the idea may seem scary, more than half of the company's staff quickly agreed to have one inserted. These chips have no GPS capability, so they can't be tracked. However, that's only one concern some people have about wearing microchips. As chips become more sophisticated, they may be used in ways that violate people's privacy. There's also a small possibility that the chips could become infected or move to other parts of the body. Right now, however, they're proving a big hit within the tech community. Okay, everybody, it's time for us to go back to the beginning and talk about the first news story. We're talking about a library in Singapore. Maybe you've been to Singapore. Maybe you're planning to go sometime in the future. And as you know, Singapore can be hot as the devil.、Mm. So maybe you want to escape the heat, and a good place to possibly go would be a library. Libraries oftentimes have study carrels and sofas and comfortable、mm. places to sit down and read a magazine. Or read a book. So yes, maybe you should check out the Tampines Regional Library in Singapore. The title of our article is "Education for Everyone at Tampines Regional Library." So yes, education is available for everyone at this library in Singapore. 
It's kind of a cool library too. I've noticed in the past, I would say, a decade, ten years, that libraries are kind of upgrading themselves. There are more computers. There are different things to do. There are activities. If you have kids, you could take them to the library, and they could do more than just sit quietly and read.、Uh, there's storytelling time. We've got a really cool green library in Beitou,、mm. which is really great if you get a chance to go out there. It's so great. That it's impossible to get a seat there. Everybody <laughs> knows about it, especially on the weekends. And it's really not a quiet place if you think you're going to go and get some peace and quiet. There are a lot of people talking and doing things. You're right. So this is one of those cool libraries over here in Asia, the Tampines Regional Library in Singapore. So the library, which reopened its doors to the public. In August of 2017, just underwent some renovation work. Underwent is the past tense of undergo. They kind of closed their doors for a while so they could make some upgrades, make some changes. Renovation means you take a house or an office or some sort of building, and you do some pretty major construction work, but you're not building it from scratch or from the ground up. You might want to take down a wall or change the bathroom. There's a lot of renovation that goes on in Taipei, especially in my building. People are always changing their apartments, and it's kind of noisy. So, of course, a library would have to close its doors for a while while it did this renovation work. This library, it says here, caters to anyone with an interest in learning. If you cater to someone or to some sort of group, it means you're providing some sort of service, or maybe it's a product that is especially pleasing to a particular group. For example. There might be a store or restaurant that caters to young families with little kids, where maybe older, more mature adults wouldn't want to go because it's loud and noisy, right? Because little kids are loud. So if it caters to a group, it is focused on that particular group or type of activity or people. You could substitute the word "serves." This、uh, library serves anyone with an interest in learning. So yes, if you're not interested in learning. And getting ahead in your life and stuff like that, then don't take up space in this library. <laughs> don't be a bum and use their sofas to take an afternoon nap or something like that. But in any case, <laughs> let's move to the next paragraph here. It says, having massively increased its floor area、mm. and seating capacity, the library now has five floors and features spaces for different kinds of activities. Cool. So yes, indeed, because it has massively increased its floor area and because it has increased its seating. Capacity, Capacity. Therefore, the library now has five floors and features spaces for different kinds of activities. So, if you're talking about something being done massively, that's an adverb. It's describing the verb here. Massively increased its floor area. It increased or made larger the floor area at a massive scale. Yeah, really big, huge. So, if you're talking about capacity, you're talking about how much something can. Hold. You're talking about perhaps the maximum capacity that something has to hold things or contain something. We often use capacity when we're talking about、uh, games or stadiums. You know, it was sold out; there was no more capacity. Or I've seen some parking lots around the area here in Taipei, especially where you know at full capacity, where there's no capacity. It might say that as well. There's no more room for you. Sorry. So they've got. But、uh, seating capacity there that has expanded, and so there are a lot of places you can go and take a seat. I don't know how many sofas you can use yourself to take a nap. I wouldn't、mm. advise that. But the library now has five floors and feature spaces for different kinds of activities. Now, if you have kids, of course you're going to want a a kind of room or area where you can maybe shut a door so it's not so loud because kids don't know to be quiet. It's hard for them because <laughs> they have a lot of energy and their voices are very loud. So for young readers, there's a play area. As well 
as a large book collection. That will be good and happy news for parents, I'm sure. It might be a good place to let your kids run wild while、mm. you check out stuff in the adult reading section.、Uh-huh. Of course, you probably need to supervise your child to a certain extent. Maybe dad and mom can take turns,、mm-hmm. stuff like that. But、yeah. it, yes, they do have a play area and lots of books for them to read. Lots of story books and、uh, books for young readers.、Mm. And then the adult reader section includes a volunteers' corner for reading-related workshops. That sounds pretty good if you're good. an adult reader, which means you're mature, you're over 18 years old,、uh-huh. and you like to read more sophisticated books rather than、uh, where the wild things are, like children's stories or things like that. Or, or the Cat in the Hat by Dr. Seuss. You know? Yes, they'll have those kinds of books in the children's <laughs> area, but in the adult section, they'll have、uh, other books, smart like、uh, maybe、uh, Emily Bronte or, or、yeah. whatever, or、uh, Charles Dickens classic reading or or whatever. Maybe some business related books and stuff. Like that, so yes, indeed. If you get kind of tired of reading those books, there are other things you can do. There's a volunteers' corner for reading-related workshops. So these are volunteers. They probably come into the library and maybe give classes on, say, how to file your taxes or something like that. You can attend workshops or things like that, or maybe some、uh, classes on how to do macrame or knitting or things like that. These would be conducted by volunteers. I'm imagining here, and also. Reading-related workshops. Maybe they have some、um, groups that get together to discuss the latest J.K. Rowling novel or something like that. Could be.、Uh, we use workshops a lot.、Uh, workshop is countable, especially when we have an office job. If you have any training, your boss might send you to a workshop. Workshops usually include you getting up and participating, and not just listening to someone talk. So be prepared. If it's a workshop, you're going to have to get up and do something. Now, in addition. To all of these things that they're offering, the library features a cooking studio. This is great, so you can even take some cooking classes there. Work centers and Pixel Labs. Pixel, at least for me, my reference of Pixel is a studio in California in Hollywood that makes those cute cartoon movies. So, oh, you're thinking of Pixar. That's different. <laughs> But Pixel is actually in photography, referred、oh. to those little bits, little dots, little that, squares. Yeah, that illuminate something.、Yeah. They provide a color, so you could have your camera say have 12 megapixels or 24 megapixels or something like that. So, do you think they're Developing film or talking about photography in these pixel labs.、Uh, I think that's probably what they're referring、oh, to. It's like a photography or a TV studio or something. They have green have- screens there, which are really fun. Yeah, it's called yeah. chroma key, right? Yeah, and、uh, you can use those green screens if you want to film some video or something like a talk show or something like、mm-hmm. that, and put something in the background that's not really there. Yeah, we use green screens for our TV videos here. Sure, right?、Yep. You can put anything behind you. You can look like you're standing in Paris, France, if you want to. If it's virtual reality, it's not real life. It's somehow digitally produced that you see on a computer, and it makes you. Feel like you're there. Virtual reality games are very popular these days.、Mm-hmm. Besides video games, some of those games are virtual reality games where you put something around your your eyes. You're wearing some sort of eye gear, and you feel like you're actually there while you're playing the video game. They might actually have reality games where you go out to a real basketball court and <laughs> bounce a real basketball and sweat real sweat. Boy, that's the kind of game I want to play. Oh, that's old fashioned. Tom. Yeah, who wants yeah. to do that when you can sit on your duff and just move your thumbs and nothing else? But let's move on here. If you are kind of tired of sitting on your duff and moving just your thumbs, there are even exercise bikes in the library's new health section, so people can burn calories while reading. So、oh, yes,、like、you、that. can hop on an exercise bike, and then you could also read. I suppose they have book stands on the exercise bikes that、yeah. you can read while you're exercising, or you can wear your headphones. And listen to music or、mm-hmm. radio programs or look at a TV screen. Who knows? And you can burn calories. 
And with all of these elements, Tampanin's new and improved regional library is a focal point for the community. A focal point, of course, is a point of attention. It's what kind of people, what people all pay attention to. It's kind of a center or the center of the community. The community means people who live in Singapore.、Uh, before we go on, I wanted to mention a duff that Tom used. It's slang, but we use it a lot, so you should know what it means. It's D U F. Ff, and it just means here are some words for your butt,、there、your you butt, your rump, your buttocks, your behind, posterior, your posterior. Yeah, so there are a lot of words for that part of our body.、Uh, guys, we're going to take a quick break. There is no Chinese teacher to help you, but stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about a really cool library over there in a neighboring country, city state we call Singapore because it's quite small. But it has the Tampanese Regional Library that has been renovated, and they now have some really cool features that you can find. So if you find yourself in Singapore, I hear they have really good food in Singapore. But now you have another place you can go and sightsee. Yes, you do, and people of all ages can go there for a varied learning experience、mm. that's setting exciting new standards for libraries. Vary just means variable with a lot of variety, so you can、uh, read books, magazines, you can look at videos, you can do virtual reality, you can work on an exercise bike, and maybe you can even chat with your friends and even play with your yo-yo. Who knows? But in any case,、yeah. yes, it's setting new standards for libraries. Other libraries are going to be looking. At this library and thinking, hmm, we should be like that too. Yeah, I can predict right now what's going to be the most popular place for kids, at least, and that's going to be the Pixel Labs, where they can use those green screens and experiment with virtual reality. They use a lot of green screens when they make those superhero movies, of course,、mm. because they have amazing abilities that aren't real. Okay, now we're going to move on to the next story. Let's look at the headline. For any news story, the title is called a headline, and unlike most English sentences, you don't have to have a complete sentence to make up a headline. In fact, it's often missing some words, so it's not a. Oh, I almost said a Chinese phrase, Tom. Woo!、Uh -oh, almost、not. came out of my mouth. Headlines are not complete sentences, so they don't have a lot of space, and they have to take off some of the words or take. Out some of the words. This is a company that's called Three Square Market. That's the name of the company, and they are microchipping employees, which is weird. Right, they're using microchip as a verb here.、Yeah. So the employees at Three Square Market are being microchipped. This is Three Square Market, which is a technology company from Wisconsin, U.S., has started inserting microchips into its employees. So this technology company, of course, is based. In Wisconsin, in the U.S., and it has started inserting microchips into its employees. So here we have the term "insert" as a verb that just means to put something small inside of something.、Mm -hmm. You can insert a coin into the coin slot. In the early days of the MRT, you would insert your card into the turnstile, and then it would come out the other side. I guess、uh, they do that、uh, with the trains here. If you buy a train ticket, they. Still do that in Paris, France, because I was just there. Yeah. But here, everybody uses either those little blue coins、yeah. for single journeys tokens. or tokens. They're called tokens. Tokens, yes. Yeah. But they scan those. You don't actually insert them in the machine. At the end, you do. At the end of your trip. That's right. It、yeah. keeps it at the end of the trip. That's、sure. right. I forgot all about that. I use them sometimes. I don't have my card, so I use them too. Or I don't have enough money on my card, so I buy a. Token, token anyway,、yeah. but I haven't ridden the MRT recently in a long time. But you get a better price if you use your Easy Card. 
Mm. Yeah. And of course,、uh, here this company is inserting those microchips into their employees. I've heard about these microchips being inserted into dogs. Yeah. In case they get lost or, or something、cats. like that. Or cats, in case they get lost, and they can identify、uh, the animal. Oh, this belongs to Mr. Jong down in Bonshaw. Let's give it back to him. But, But the it, difference with the animal chips is they do have GPS ability right, or capability.、Right. Yeah, we'll get to that in just a couple、yeah. of seconds here. But this might sound like a sci-fi horror movie. Yes. But in fact, the employees are having them implanted voluntarily. So yes, if you hear about someone inserting microchips inside of you, it probably sounds like、uh, the Soviet KG. Be or something. They want to keep track of you, so you're not causing any trouble. And if you do cause trouble, they'll find you. They'll send you to Siberia. They'll torture you, and then they'll execute you at the end. Yes, that's what would happen in a sci-fi horror movie. But、uh, yes, the people are actually volunteering to have these implanted. They are having them implanted voluntarily. Uh, the word implant here is similar to the word insert. Insert means you put something inside of something, but implant means that that thing stays there, usually out of sight, like to implant something inside your body,、uh, or it could be an organ or something. Yeah, in that case, a pacemaker.、Uh, it could be, yeah, or kidney. Sometimes we share organs with people who. Perhaps they need an extra kidney. Their kidneys are not doing well. If you use it as a noun, though, it's implant. But if it's a verb, it's implant. Sorry about that. So it's an interesting idea. It's one that I think is scary. I don't. I wouldn't do it. The chips is what we call those microchips for short. We can just call them a chip.、Mm. We use chips also, guys, when we go gambling and you go and buy the chips. You exchange chips for money for real money.、Uh, those are chips and also potato chips. Chips are chips,、mm. and in at least in Great Britain, I was going to say England, but in Great Britain they eat fish and chips, and in that case, chips are actually French fries. So chips are used in lots of different ways. These are microchips. They were designed by Three Square Market with the help of another company called Biohacks, and that company is a Swedish company from the country of Sweden. Right, so they're helping them out, and this kind of sounds like they're implanting a yo-yo card or an easy card inside their skins. Because here are some of the functions: these chips allow wearers to open company doors. I guess you scan the door lock, and it lets you come in. You can log into your computer, so it's like your password there. Right. And you can even purchase food in the company's break room. I'd like to have these Swedish meatballs, please. Oh yes, here scan here, and that will subtract the amount from your paycheck. So. That's what it sounds like. It sort of sounds like an easy card that's actually implanted inside your body. At least that's what it sounds like to me. Yeah, it allows these wearers. We put those quotation marks around wearers, and what was the other place we did wearing lower、mm. in the third paragraph? Because they're not really wearing them, but you know they're inside their bodies. There was a story about this just a couple months ago, and they showed an X-ray of a hand that had had the chip implanted. Kind of weird, yeah. Anyway, they're able to do quite a few things, even. You know, buy some food in the company's break room instead of calling it a canteen, which is sometimes what a company referred to their kitchen area as, or their lunch room. You could also call it a break room. There are different words we use to talk about the place in an office where employees can go and get some food and eat. There's a refrigerator, you know, microwave stuff like that. Their main advantage, these microchips that we're talking about. Is convenience. People will do a lot just so it's more convenient. They don't want to add more hassle or trouble to their lives. But I think this is one thing that I would just go. You know what? I'm just going to do it. I'm going to use more time. I don't want that chip in my body. But convenience is pretty important for a lot of people these days. Remember, Seven Elevens and Family Marts are not convenient. Stores with a T. They're convenience stores. I still hear people in Taiwan using the adjective instead of the noun. So remember, those quick stores that you can run into are convenience stores, just like our vocabulary word right here. Yeah, I can understand the confusion because convenient itself is an adjective.、Yeah. So why would you not use that word to describe the store? But convenience also serves as an adjective in this sense. So it's a store that provides convenience. 
ones. But the main advantage of these chips is convenience, as people with chips need not worry about forgetting their keys, door cards, or wallets. Right. That sounds attractive to me because I'm always looking for my wallet or my keys or my door card. I guess. You know what? We also call door cards. Key cards. Actually, we use key cards a lot in the states. In hotels, too. Yeah, I had a key card for my job in New York City, too. Okay,、yeah. very good, and you can scan it or whatever.、Sure. Though the idea may seem scary, more than half of the company staff quickly agreed to have one inserted. Which、uh, is kind of weird here because so many people are volunteering to have these things installed. Yeah, I do lose my wallet from time to time, but not that often. <laughs> I'm not that stupid, <laughs> so I don't think I need a card in my skin because you know it could cause some other problems in the future. I could be tracked down by Big Brother, even though they say there's no GPS. But how do you really know for sure? I never trust them. Okay, yeah, you got to be careful. Plus, think about having this foreign object. Inside your body,、mm. you don't know what's going to happen to it, or if it will suddenly decide to travel towards your heart. Yeah. Anyway, some things to think about. In the final paragraph, it says these chips have no GPS capability. If you have some sort of capability, you have some sort of power or ability to do something. We often talk about devices that have certain capabilities, things they can do, features that they have. But、uh, I don't know. They say that, but maybe there is、uh, something on the chip that later on down the road in the future they can flip on a switch that will give it GPS capability. Which is global positioning system, which most of our cars have nowadays. Uh, sure, and our phones, I guess, have those functions as、mm-hmm. well. I'm wondering here, though, that if you refuse to have it installed, could you actually be getting yourself into trouble that way? Could they fire you? Maybe、yeah. so. Or hey, this person doesn't want the card installed. We're going to have to pay extra attention to that person. They yeah, might be、mm, trying to steal something right, or something. Right. Right. And of course, they don't have this GPS capability, so they can't be tracked. However, that's only one concern some people have about wearing microchips. There's wearing in quotation marks again.、Mm. Uh, this is their concern. It's only one concern, one thing that they worry about or that they think about. There are other concerns that they have.、Mm-hmm. For example, here as it continues. As chips become more sophisticated, they may be used in ways that violate people's privacy. So they're going to become more sophisticated, which means more complicated, more detailed, more able to perform other tasks and things like that. So who knows? These chips may be able to read your mind, or be able to detect what kind of food you're eating, or what kind of people you're hanging out with. Right, sophisticated. You could also use the word complicated or advanced. Yeah, but they can do a lot of things. If you talk about some of the scary issues in the future, it's that you know, in some ways, it could violate people's privacy in the future. We've already had our privacy violated in a lot of ways. But if you violate something, usually we're talking about people who break the law or do something that's against the law. It could be that you're just failing to do. What your company asks you to do, they're not going to put you in prison for that. But you could not do what you're supposed to do. But we use violate a lot when we talk about drivers who are, you know, going through red lights. They're violating traffic laws. That's right. So、uh, if you violate someone's privacy, it means you are looking into their private lives in a way you shouldn't. And we all want to keep our privacy. I hope there's also a small possibility that the chips could become infected. If you're infected, usually we use that word to talk about I have an infection or I have a cold, I have bronchitis. So if you're infected, you have some sort of disease-causing organism in your body. But those little chips might make your body unhappy inside, and that could lead to other problems. Indeed, so it could become infected or move to other parts. Of your body, the lungs, your liver, or、Yikes. whatever. So right now, however, they're proving a big hit within the tech community.
and I'm still kind of、uh, shocked at how much we allow technology companies to monitor us. What、mm. the heck is going on here? We're voluntarily letting them be Big Brother. But in any case, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. It's time now to listen to no, no Chinese teacher. No Chinese teacher. It's time for us to say goodbye. So let's just do that. <laughs> Thank you very much for attending our class and listening to our lesson. And please join us again next time for another edition of our program from all of us here at English Digest. I'm Tom. I'm Stephanie. Bye. Bye.